Let's do an example with simple harmonic motion. I like this near shake my head. <laughs> that means simple harmonic motion, right? No. Okay, we have an object that's undergoing SHM as seen below. And the question is, what's the frequency of the oscillation? Look at what we have on the y-axis. We have acceleration, and it's in meters per second squared, so we're okay there. But look at the x-axis here. We've got millimeters. Just be very, very careful there. I just want to point that out right here. These are here, millimeters. Okay, so let's consider then what to do for uh, finding the frequency. Well, what we can tell from the graph, turns out we can tell the angular frequency. So we're going to start by finding omega. Now, how are we going to find that? I think it maybe helps to look at the original equation we have. So acceleration and subharmonic motion goes minus omega squared x. And if we remember about linearization right here, this a, well, that's on the y-axis. So that's going to be the y value. Then we've got the x, well, that's the x value. And the important part then is this piece right here. This piece right here is the gradient. So whatever's in front of there, this omega squared, that's the gradient. So because we know that this here is the gradient, remember we can work out then what is the meaning of it. We know that if omega squared is the gradient, well then omega must be the square root of the gradient. But remember because it's a minus, we're going to take the positive value of it. So I'm going to say then uh, omega then is going to equal the square root of the gradient, but I'm going to take the absolute value of it because, again, um, the gradient is going to be negative, and I don't want to take the square root of a negative. Also because uh, we just care about the actual value. So I need to find this gradient. Remember how to find the gradient of something? Then it's going to be just, uh, let's see, absolute value of, well, delta y over delta x. In other words, how much does the y change over how much does the x change? So we need to take this uh, graph then and figure out the gradient. So we need to know two points. Maybe I'll pick this point right here. That's an easy one. And um, if I go back a little bit, maybe I go back to like minus 0 0.5, for example, here. If I do that, I can go all the way up to this point right here. It kind of lines up here. And if I look carefully at where that is, that's at 2400. So I figured this one right here, then I can say this value right here is 2,400. This here is minus uh, 0.5 here, but watch out, it's minus 0.5 millimeters. Now keep in mind the gradient is technically uh, going to be negative, right, because it goes down 2,400 and then over 0.5, but I'm going to ignore the negatives. So that means I'm going to say then, okay, uh, omega then is going to be just 2400 over, and you might think it's 0 0.5, but watch out. Remember, because it's millimeters, I have to say times 10 to the minus 3. This part right here was really important, okay, so don't forget about that. Okay, and don't forget, ooh, i got to do the square root of all this, though. So I'm going to use my calculator to do this, so I'll get out my calculator, and I'll say give me the square root of 2400 over, uh, whoops, actually I should do it as a fraction. So I'll say 2400 over and 0 0.5 times 10 to the minus 3. And I end up with uh, 2190.89. Okay, and I'm going to maybe just put a little circle around that and say, okay, great, now I've got omega. Well, now what? What can I do now? Well, now I'm actually ready to find the frequency. So I'll say find f. Now let's go get our equation uh, that relates those things, and it goes t equals 1 over f equals uh, 2 pi over omega. Now I don't really care about the period, but I do care about this piece right here. I can use this piece right here to figure it out. So let's go. So I got 1 over f uh, equals 2 pi over omega. Okay, I want to get omega, um, oh, sorry, I want to get f by itself, so I'll get f, I'll multiply it over here, I'll get omega over here. Um, so that means, let's see, I'll have f here, I'll have um, omega equals 2 pi f. I'm just moving, I'm just getting rid of fractions. And to get f by itself, then it's going to be omega over 2 pi. So I'll say that f equals omega over 2 pi. Well, if I do that, then I'm just going to put in all my uh, numbers here. So f equals well, omega, which was 2190.89. Keep in mind, I need to keep all the decimals. All that over 2 pi. So let me do this on my calculator. 
Uh, so I'll get that out. Here we go. And I'm keeping all the decimals here. So I just got to do, uh, well, give me a fraction here. Give me the answer, because I want to keep all my decimals divided by 2 times pi. And if I do that, I end up with an answer of uh, 348.69, let's say. And if I do that to two significant figures, as I'm told in this case then, okay, that means it's going to be uh, 3, and the 4 will round up to a 5. So it'll be uh, 350. And what are the units for frequency? Well, it's 1 over seconds, which is hertz. So there we go. So hopefully uh, that made some sense. And I think it was a good example because we used a graph to tell omega, and then we used an equation to get from omega to the frequency.